It was the Vivek Ramaswamy show last night on NBC, and everybody else was just along for the ride. But it was advertised as another Republican presidential debate that literally began with Vivek Ramaswamy calling on RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel, who has been a horrible leader, to resign. <laughs> he didn't mention this, but one of the things that she thinks the party is missing is there aren't enough LGBTQ people in it. Being the chairwoman of the party, she's the one who authorized NBC to host and moderate the debate, which obviously Vivek didn't think was the greatest idea. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my, yield my time to you. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. Oh, it gets even better. He then called out one of the moderators by name who's sitting right across the stage from him for perpetuating the Trump-Russia hoax back in 2016. You think the Democrats, and we've got Kristen Welker here, do you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Kristen, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you and the media and the corrupt media establishment. Ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. <laughs> Mr. Ross. Sorry. This is how we get our country back. Oh, there's plenty more of Vivek. He's just getting warmed up, so stay tuned. But Donald Trump did win the debate again, as MSNBC admitted. His poll numbers keep going up with every debate, even though he's not wasting his time going there. <laughs> Before the first debate, he was polling at 55.2% of Republican voters, and now he is polling at over 60%, while Ron DeSantis started off at 14.2% and is now only polling at 15%. And being the genius that he is, Donald Trump held an event in Florida last night during the GOP debate, which I'm sure had more viewers watching the live streams than NBC did the debate. And uh, do you notice anything special about this patriotic American? <laughs> yes, that is my Wanted for President shirt, which you should order from my online store at markdice.com. And by the way, today through Friday at midnight, you can save 25% off of any of my shirts at markdice.com by using the promo code HOLIDAYS25. It's HOLIDAYS with a Z. I didn't make up the promo code. I noted that it's lame. My t-shirt distributor did. I had no say in it. But use it this week through Friday at midnight to save 25% and get your own Wanted for President shirt from markdice.com. Oh, and by the way, a lot of people are suggesting that Donald Trump choose Vivek as his running mate for VP. I'm not so sure about that, but I think that he should be, at the minimum, the new chairman of the RNC. And even better, Donald Trump should choose him as his press secretary. And here he is having a little dust up with neocon Nikki Haley, who, at one of the last debates, chastised him for joining TikTok in order to try to reach the younger voters. In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your else. voice. Your adult daughter. The next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters propping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the easy scum. answer is actually to say... You're just scum, she said. Now, bringing someone's family members into a debate like that is something that should almost always be avoided. Hunter Biden, of course, is fair game because he's making money off of his father's connections. And this, I think, is fair game as well because she didn't just make fun of him for joining TikTok. She completely blasted him for joining the platform. And that's a fair point. If TikTok is so dangerous and toxic that it should be avoided at all costs then why is she allowing her daughter to use it? But wait, there's more. It gets even better. Oh, and I almost forgot, Ron DeSantis was there. And to be fair, he did make some good points. And I'm also going to rein in the Federal Reserve. They have helped create, uh, with their reckless monetary policy, what we have faced since the COVID-19 pandemic. They botched it. Congress botched it. Both parties are to blame. Fed should focus on stable prices. They are not an economic central planner for the American people. Yes, and thank you, Ron Paul, for educating the American people about the insidious nature of the Fed. 
Chris Krispy Kreme was there as well for the sole purpose of complaining about Donald Trump. But let's get back to the Vivek Ramaswamy show, <laughs> shall we? Do you want a leader from a different generation who's going to put this country first? Or do you want Dick Cheney in three-inch heels? All right, Mr. In which Ramaswamy. case, we've got two of them on stage Mr. tonight. Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. Senator, uh, Senator Scott, yes, Senator, same question to you about... Now, that went over most people's heads. Most people thought that he was just talking about Nikki Haley, because, of course, she's wearing heels. But if you're familiar with Bootgate, which went down last week, or the long-standing rumors about Ron DeSantis appearing to wear lifts in his boots in order to make himself appear taller, then you would know when Vivek said that there are two of them on stage wearing heels, he was also talking about little Ron. And as you can imagine, the liberal media and I'm sure the pundits on Fox News, the Republican establishment, aren't very happy with Vivek's stellar performance last night. Another theme of tonight's debate, back back for an encore from the last debate, um, was just the, the, the deep, palpable, withering disgust that candidate Vivek Ramaswamy seems to inspire from his fellow candidates. He makes them say things you can't imagine they've ever said before in their lives. He makes them make facial expressions on the stage that you're quite sure they don't know they're making in public. Yes, because much like Donald Trump, he is saying the unvarnished truths that most Americans are thinking. So, of course, John McCain's daughter, Meghan McCain, a rhino, a Republican in name only, tweeted out that Vivek is just a hideous, crazy person. Oh, and by the way, Frank Luntz, Frank Dunce, the famous pollster who I believe is literally roommates in Washington, D.C. with Kevin McCarthy. He posted this shortly before the debate, praising Ronna McDaniel, saying that she is the GOP's secret weapon, an amazing speaker and smart strategist. So you know that she's terrible. And I don't know what was better, Vivek calling out Ronna McDaniel to kick off the debate and ridiculing the network that she chose as the venue to host it, his comments about Dick Cheney wearing heels, or his closing remarks here. I also want to close with one message to the Democrat Party. End this farce that Joe Biden is going to be your nominee. We know he's not even the president of the United States. He's a puppet for the managerial class. So have the guts to step up and be honest about who you're actually going to put up so we can have an honest debate. Biden should step aside, end his candidacy now, so we can see whether it's Newsom or Michelle Obama or whoever else. All right, Just Mr. tell Ramaswamy, us the truth so we can have an honest debate. Up. Ambassador. And here is CNN's post-debate coverage where David Axelrod, who was Barack Obama's senior advisor, admitted the obvious. Look, first of all, this debate is sort of odd because it's like the silver medal round. It's like the gold medal winner has already been declared, and this is the silver medal round. And now it's come down really to two candidates, Haley and DeSantis. The problem is that Trump has such a large lead nationally that uh, it it just may be meaningless. So what are they? (laughs) Meaningless, he says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, look at the right. state of Florida. R- <laughs> Donald Trump's far more popular than Ron DeSantis in his own state. We're going to take a short break, Kennedy. To, uh, Vivek Ramos. <laughs> and here is MSNBC's post-debate coverage where the panelists are actually all right. I felt like I was in the twilight zone because I've never seen this accurate of an assessment of a situation on MSNBC ever. Why wouldn't Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis, who are both young, just sit it out until 2028 instead of putting themselves in the mouth of the lion, doing absolutely nothing, running in circles? Why are they even in this game until maybe, he's done? Because maybe he has a heart attack. I don't know. He's 77 years old. <laughs> OK, but I mean, honestly, I think that they're just waiting well, around for something, know, some exogenous so this event is an to happen. Under, this is well, an so understudy. That problem. And Lawrence stopped the hammering O'Donnell, who's jumped to range syndrome, must have went into remission for a few minutes had an equally accurate assessment of why these idiots decided to get into the race in the first place. If someone were to say to you, you know, there's a candidate uh, who could be the front runner, but there's a very strong likelihood he's going to be indicted four times. Uh, you might want you, you to get a campaign ready to run against him. These decisions to run were all made before he was yeah. indicted once. And so they had good reason to think this could be a frail candidacy for Donald Trump as the indictments mounted up. They now have information that they didn't have at the beginning. Yeah, that 60 percent thing didn't exist. He's talking about Trump being at 60 percent among Republican voters with 
Little Ron still lagging behind in second place at 15%. Someone else who's lagging behind is me. It's my new book, The War on Conservatives, dropped from number four on the Amazon bestseller list down to number eight. <laughs> but it still is beating Ted Cruz at the moment. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and order yourself a copy or two. Get some for Christmas. I doubt we're going to get to number one because these are some very big celebrity names with books going up against Britney Spears and Barbara Streisand and this uh, romance novelist. <laughs> it's going to be tough. But if we can get it back up to number four or number three or at least keep it ahead of Ted Cruz, that would be success. Nothing against Ted Cruz. I'm sure that his book or whoever wrote it uh, put together a good book, but just some friendly competition between a guy in his kitchen on a laptop and one of the most popular senators in the country. So, again, head on over to markdice.com. Oh, actually, no. Head on over to amazon.com. Head over to markdice.com to get the t-shirts, of course. Head on over to amazon.com or click the link in the description below. Ed, check it out.